Windows Deployment Services WDS Part 1 of 3. Hello everyone. In this video, we'll see what Windows Deployment Services is, what it does for us, and how we can use it. So, what is the agenda of this video? We'll see an introduction of Windows Deployment Services WDS. We'll see what is new in WDS of Windows Server 2012 R2. What are the two different role services which we have in WDS, which is Deployment Server and Transport Server? We'll look at what they do. We'll cover prerequisites for installing WDS in an Active Directory environment and also in a non-Active Directory environment. We'll also look at the lab environment that we have set up for WDS and then we'll perform the installation of WDS role using Server Manager or PowerShell. Finally, we'll configure Windows Deployment Services. So what is Windows Deployment Services, WDS? Windows Deployment Services is a technology from Microsoft which enables you to deploy uh, Windows operating systems. It allows you to do a network-based installation of Windows operating system and in Windows Server 2003 it was called as Remote Installation Services, RIS. Now using WDS you can perform remote installation of Windows operating system in more efficient way and you don't need to install each operating system directly from installation media such as USB or DVD. You also don't need IT professionals having to be present physically at each computer to do the installation. Computers or servers without any operating system, they can be pixie booted to do bare metal installation of Windows operating system using WDS. So WDS is aimed at small or medium-sized businesses who may not have the budget for enterprise class OS deployment technologies such as SCCM. So these are the new features of WDS of Windows Server 2012 R2. Now it can support more operating systems starting from Windows XP, Windows Server 2003 to Windows 8.1 and Windows Server 2012. Images such as .vim, .vht, and .vhdx are supported and they can be managed by WDS. And now you can multicast .vhdx images in WDS. And also WDS can be managed by MMC Snap-in and WDS Util command. Now it can also be managed by Windows PowerShell. TFTP is supported with some new features. Deploying Windows images to ARM processor clients is now supported in WDS. You can also do multicasting over IPv6 and DHCPv6. Driver import can now detect and prevent duplicate driver packages from being added to the driver store. WDS can now support custom Pixie providers and multicast providers. WDS also supports transmitting images by using multicasting on a standalone server, which can be your transport server. Now, WDS includes a Pixie provider to boot clients. So, x86 clients, which are having 32 bit processor with QEFI BIOS can now network boot and do a complete end-to-end -end deployment using WDS. Now let's talk about two role services of WDS. First one is deployment server and the second one is transport server. So what, what does deployment server do? It, it provides the full functionality and feature set of WDS. It is used to configure and remotely install Windows operating systems. And deployment server is actually dependent on the core parts of 
transport server, which means transport server is needed for the deployment server to run. And what is transport server? Transport server is just a subset of the functionality of WDS. It just contains the core networking parts. Transport ser so basically transport server transmits the Windows images to clients for bare metal installation of Windows operating system. And you need to use transport server if you want to have a a Pixie server that allows clients to Pixie boot and download your own custom setup application. Now let's talk about the prerequisites for installing WDS if your WDS setup is integrated with Active Directory. If you are planning to install both deployment server and transport server, you need an Active Directory domain and your WDS server should be joined as a member server of an Active Directory domain. Your WDS server can be a domain controller, but it is recommended that you don't run the WDS service on your domain controller. By the way, the forest and domain configurations or the domain and forest mode, it really doesn't matter for your WDS setup. It can be at any version or at any mode. And you need a working DHCP server with an active scope because WDS uses Pixie, which relies on DHCP. You also need a working DNS server. You need a NTFS volume to store your Windows images. And to install the WDS role, you must be a member of the local administrators group on the WDS server. For initializing the WDS server, you must be a member of the domain users group. And if you're planning to install transport server only, then your only prerequisite is that you should be a member of the local administrators group on the server to install the transport server role. Now, if you don't have an Active Directory domain, the prerequisites for installing WDS is more or less same when compared with prerequisites for installing WDS in an Active Directory domain. The only thing that you don't have to do is join the server to the Active Directory domain or initialize the WDS server in Active Directory because you don't really have an Active Directory in this type of setup. Now the lab environment we have is pretty simple. We have a domain controller which is DC for contoso.local domain which is also a DNS server. We have a DHCP server and we have a WDS server and this is the server where we are going to install the WDS role with deployment and transport service roles. All our servers are joined to the Active Directory domain and all of them are running Windows Server 2012 R2. With this setup, what we are going to do is we are going to do a network-based installation or you can call it as bare metal installation of Windows operating systems to these computers. So on this one, we are going to install Windows 8.1. And on this one, we are going to install Windows Server 2012 R2. All right, now what we are going to do is we are going to install WDS role on our WDS server. So let me show you my DC. So this is my DC. And I have a DHCP server. And I have the WDS server. So there are two ways to install the WDS role on your WDS server. First, using the server manager. And the other way is to do through PowerShell. Now, let me install the WDS role on this. Now, we have already logged in as a domain administrator on this server. So we have opened the server manager. We'll click Manage, and we'll click Add Roles and Features and we'll click next on before you begin screen so we'll click role based or feature based installation and we'll select our WDS server to deploy the WDS role and if you scroll down you can see the WDS service listed as Windows deployment services so I'll check that 
Now you can include the management tools to be installed as well as the remote server administration tools. So I'm going to click app features and I'll click next. On select feature screen, I'm not going to select anything. I'll simply click next. On the WDS page, it will tell you what WDS does and things to note about them, which we have already covered in the previous slides. So we'll click next. On the select role services, we are going to select both deployment server as well as the transport server because we are going to use the full feature set of WDS. So we'll click next. On the confirm installation selections, you can review the selections you have made. If required, you can reboot the server automatically by checking this option. I'll click yes and click install. Now, if you want to do WDS installation using PowerShell, this is the command that you're going to run. Install Windows feature minus name WDS computer name WDS.contoso.local and you'll include the management tools. So this will install both the deployment server as well as the transport server roles. But we have installed the WDS role using server manager and you can see that the installation has succeeded. So I'm going to click close. Now after you install Windows Deployment Service Role, you must uh, configure the WDS server so that you can add, boot, and install images to deploy them to the bare metal client for Windows operating system installation. So back to our WDS server, we, we have already logged in as a domain administrator on the server. So we'll open up Server Manager and we'll click on Tools and then we'll click on Windows Deployment Services, which will open the MMC Snap-in. And in the left pane of the Windows Deployment Services, we'll expand the list of servers. And you can see our WDS server, which is listed here. And when we click on this, you can see that the Windows Deployment Services is not configured. So we're going to right-click on this and click Configure Server. And these are the prerequisites that we have already met to install the WDS role on this server in an Active Directory domain. So we'll simply click Next. And yes, this WDS server should be integrated with Active Directory. So I'm going to check this option and click Next. And for Remote Installation Folder Location, this is where you're going to save all your boot images and install images. So this has to be a NTFS volume. So I have a dedicated drive for this. So I'm going to go into that, Data D. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this as Remote Install. All right, so we have specified a path to store all our Windows images. So I'm going to click Next. Now this is where you're going to define how your WDS server is going to respond to your Pixie clients to boot the operating system. So the first option is do not respond to any client computers. So what it does, it will basically make the WDS server to not to respond to any Pixie clients. And the next option is respond only to known client computers. Now this will only respond to known client computers. Now when I say known client computers, and the third option is respond to all client computers, to known as well as unknown. So any Pixie clients can talk to your WDS server and your WDS server is going to respond to all of them, whether they are known or unknown computers. Now this option, if I select this, it requires an administrator to approve an unknown computer. So basically, if a Pixie client, if an unknown Pixie client is trying to talk to your WDS server to get a to get a Windows image to load up, it has to wait until it gets an approval from the WDS administrator. And that computer will show up in pending devices node. And once the WDS administrator approves the computer, it will show up in the list of pre-staged 
clients. So I'm going to click next. All right, so we have successfully configured Windows Deployment Services. And the next step is to add the images to the server now. So I'm going to uncheck it, and I'll click Finish. Now that we have configured the WDS server integrated with Active Directory, in the next part of this video series, I will show you how you can add the images. And these images include a boot image, which is required to boot your computer, and the install images, which is the actual images of the Windows operating system that you deploy. Thanks for watching this videos. For more videos, please subscribe to my channel.